Hello everyone and welcome to the highly anticipated episode I was already spoiling the whole week and finally it's here. You have seen it from the title, you've seen it from the thumbnail and also potentially you've seen it from uh, some of my social media stuff I uh, pushed out the last couple of minutes or hours. And yeah, we are back in Yosemite National Valley Zoo, if you will, or Yosemite Valley Zoo, which is the official name of this series. It is my sandbox series, and if you're new to the channel, this is my uh, ongoing series, which I'm uh, doing in Planet Zoo. So um, the location is set in the Yosemite National Park, and I'm kind of pretending that this is the location where we are building our zoo. Now, uh, in the last episode, we built the uh, basic uh, environment around here. We made some some mountains, we made a parking lot and also the entrance of the zoo. In this second episode it's a little bit of a different story because I'm building something completely different. So first of all we will have animals, this is a good thing I guess in Planet Zoo, um, but secondly we will have a little bit of an infrastructure going on and this will be the main focus point of the zoo. This will be the main attraction, this is, this is what the zoo is standing for. So I said in the last episode that this is going to be uh, somewhat a realistic zoo but not to the very last bit so it's not going to be the hyper realism kind of zoo um, what it is though is a very very rich and uh, highly themed zoo uh, as I've said already uh, and and this thing in here is the it is kind of the reincarnation of what is this idea so it is definitely um, the one thing that you will focus on I have to say, it is a insanely well uh, working thing in the end, and I'm I'm completely I'm completely blown away by the fact that this works um, so well. I mean, it, I I just the, the game just showed how much potential is in there. I have a lot of stuff I want to talk about in on a different, you know, in a different episode, um, which I, I think still should be changed. But this episode gave me a lot of faith in the game. This episode really showed what is possible. And um, I have to say, I basically I used, uh, again, two and a half each hours of footage, uh, even though I have about six hours of material worth showing. But I'm, you know, the thing is, I'm not, not going to show everything because uh, it's too long and I would need to speed it up too much. Anyways, let's talk a little bit about this habitat. Before we do so, a big congrats to the winner of my logo competition. And the winner is... Oh god. Um, I hope I will pronounce the name somewhat correctly, but it is Agnieszka Stavinoga. Or Stavinoga. Stavinoga? I think it's Stavinoga. It seems to be Polish, if I'm not completely wrong. So, again, it's Agnieszka Stavinoga. I hope it was somewhat correct. Um, you won, and uh, honestly, guys, first of all, a big, big, big mention um, of all the guys contributing. There were so many great logos. It was really hard to choose four for the final uh, voting, and I, you know, from the results, you can tell it was a very, very close one between the second place, which was entry number D, which is from Yusuf Alia. So, ta -ta 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 you were very close. I would love to give you um, <laughs> another wonderful uh, sub on my channel, but you have already, so... <clears throat> I can't do it, but yeah, um, guys, uh, thank you for all the mentions and for all the um, for all the entries, and it was it was insane. Like the designs were so good, but the one of Agnieszka when I first saw it, when it dropped into my mailbox, I want to say it's it was insane. Um, I was seeing it, I was like, yeah. Like, you haven't seen the first episode. When the people sent me the logo last week or like in the, in the middle of this week, they haven't seen anything of uh, this valley here. So I, I kind of gave a brief introduction um, uh, via mail and set the theme. And it was so interesting to see what they came up with without actually knowing how I'm going to do this. Like, obviously, if you Google Yosemite National Park, you, you will get some kind of ideas. But it was super awesome to see. So yeah, quite a lot of uh, amazing stuff um, that I got sent there. And yeah, again, big, big congrats to, to the winner. Uh, I think it's fully deserved. And yeah, you've seen it already on the thumbnail, so it might not be too, too like uh, super crazy for you. But Agnieszka, if you are listening to this episode, I hope so, but I'll put this also in the comments. Um, please send me an email again, uh, claiming, so to say, your win. And you need to tell me what is your Twitch name, uh, because otherwise I can't gift you the subs for two months. 
month i will do so uh, eventually or we do it in the next stream depends a little bit how you want to do it but anyways a big congrats and uh, all of the four uh, finalists will be featured in the next episode in another area of the park which i'm going to show you then um while you see in the background that i'm building on something and we talk about this a whole lot more in this episode there's plenty of time left so we talk about this um habitat in particular uh quite in detail but i wanted to to talk about a few other things first so yeah big thanks uh, to all of the people participating in here and now i'm going to go into the comments of my last video which was from yesterday so it's um it's a bit of a tricky thing i have to admit because um there were so many comments <laughs> i <laughs> i'm i'm so happy i hope that you guys are keeping it up. Um, but I wanted to go through some of those comments, but um, this is something really I want to keep up. And there was one comment in particular. Let me show if I um, find one. So first of all, there's one comment from a black diamond man, and he was so kind to put it in English and German too. By the way, I what I wanted to take this opportunity to give the German people following me a little bit of a um, info here. So I am super happy that you guys are following me and I can totally understand that you're writing some German comments down there because it's easier for you. But if I may ask you, please comment in English if you can. If not, that's that's fine. If you if you're not able to talk English at all, that's fine. But if you you think you can translate it to English, please do it because it's only fair for all the other people to be able to read what you are coming up with. Because some of the ideas of the German people are so nice that I really want to read them out um, and, and show them. But probably it's a bit of a, an issue because other people can't see it and read it. So here's the one from Black Diamond Man. Um, he he actually did this. Um, so he said, Hello Rudy, I have an idea for a story mission. Your leading animal welfare activist Nadine Zimmermann, which is a pretty German German name, stomped into your office. Uh, stomps into your office. She holds a huge pile of files. When she uh, noticed that she looked a little bit excited, you ask her what's going on. Um, happily, she brings you the good news. Uh, not long ago, a tiger was seen near your zoo. Yes, a tiger. It was probably exposed by a local millionaire who had it as a pet, but never cared too well for it. Nadine asked you to get a habitat for the tiger ready. Mission is build a tiger habitat for a tiger of your choice and adopt two tigers so they can protect... Uh, no, what is that? Uh, they can... I, 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 th I don't know this word. They can get babies uh, that you can send them, some of them, into back into the wilderness to improve the overall wildlife stock. Reward, Nadine will look if she can get another rare animal for your zoo. This is something really cool because that's what I said. I mean, this is this is really contributing to the story. So if we do this tiger habitat, we can actually build it according to this story and maybe work a little bit of a uh, more or less like an inside joke into them. Maybe we are going to make a little notch to, to this millionaire. Maybe we are going to build something like that, that you guys can recognize that this is the story. I love those things because they will lead to eventually um, making a stronger connection between us uh, in this series. And only those ones uh, who, who watch the still from the beginning will know these little inside jokes so this is the kind of stuff I wanted to do now another one I wanted to read out is um, where is that one da -da 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 -da. let me just check um, where is this comment oh that's why oh god I hate YouTube it only shows the ones I haven't answered and I have answered this one comment let me go and search for it uh, uh, um, I'm so sorry. I should have been prepared a little bit better, but I uh, want to. I want to uh, be Rudy again, and Rudy is not prepared. On that. Where is that one comment? Uh, uh, uh. I really, I really, I am confused. Where is this? There we go, I found it. Ah, okay, it sorts, oh, well, it was my bad. It sorted in the wrong direction. I was scrolling all the way down because it was one of the first uh, comments, but I, I was confused. Okay, so, um, this uh, comment is from uh, Gimme a Hull Yeah podcast. Wow, what a name. So, Mr. N. Camel, so pleased you have turned your attention from Isla Nepali to beautiful California. The Four Peaks have always been an attraction to tourists and we hope you can re revitalize the area to capitalize, uh, capitalize on its popularity and bring some income to our local economy. I must say I was shocked when you expressed your interest in building a zoo instead of a theme park, but I'm sure you will help uh, highlight the wonderful ecosystem over here anyways. I have just come back from an initial inspection of the progress you have been making. 
and your tribute to our famous Yosemite Valley Hotel. During my inspection, I was a little concerned on how the building will hold up to the rain. Our state uh, gets quite a lot of rain during January to March month and the roof towards the left could create a waterfall for guests to walk under during their entrance. I'd like to see you use a local plumber for the uh, plumber for the job. Call Pets Perfect Plumbing for a quote. The number is 214-1612-2113-29147. I forgot the number already. He has been expecting your call. Kind regards, hell yeah. Guys, this is exactly what I was aiming for. That is the one thing I, I really want to see. This creativity, this kind of passion to bring into the comments. It's so funny. I, I just love to read those comments. I was actually really sitting in, in, in the office and I was spitting my water over my uh, um, over my desk. And my, you know people around me were asking what's going on. I was like, never mind. You won't understand anyways. But it was a funny situation. So um, yeah, it's, it's exactly what I want. And uh, actually, uh, in the funny story, there was a good note. So I, I just looked back at my entrance and I might just want to have like a little bit of a um, drainage going on. So where the water is then going down a little bit more safe. Um, because actually in the game we have rain and the, the effect actually looks pretty decent. Uh, so I tested it with rain and you can actually already tell from from how the rain tackles it in, in Planet Zoo um, that this would be a pretty much of a, a difficult situation uh, to have. Anyways, now we are midway through um, our episode and now you can see something creating in the background from the footage. So what we've done in the past couple of uh, minutes, in fact, in the last 11-ish uh, minutes, I have created the Planet of the Apes um, early, like the early movies, like not the old movies, but in terms of the storyline early movies, where the animals uh, near the National Park uh, of California, um, close to uh, San Francisco, have had their bases, this wooden bases where the people go in and, you know, um, it, it is actually, um, it looks quite different. And, and here's me telling you that this is obviously not a one by one rebuild. This is in inspired by it. First of all, because I don't want to go into this kind of copyright thing. So I, I try to stick to something that looks similar and not copies it. So I'm also not using the exact name. I'm not using music or whatever. And uh, yeah, all these kind of things um, to prevent myself from getting a little bit into trouble regarding copyright things. So this is some kind of San Francisco-ish inspired habitat. Let's put it that way, because you can't have copyright on San Francisco. So that's fine. And I can use a uh, somewhat of a Golden Gate inspired bridge-ish thing. So um, that's the cool thing about here. So it's it's not one by one, um, but I guess everyone who has seen the mu movie will definitely see my references in here. So I was using uh, quite a lot of these iron pieces, but also I figured that some of the East, in, uh, East Asia uh, scenery items uh, fit very well in here. First of all, they have a pretty decent uh, metal uh, shading to them, but also they had some nice iron bars and, and stuff like that in the, in the setting that could be used. My idea about this habitat is, now I, I know that a lot of people will scream and cry in front of their computers right now because they will find it pretty, pretty unrealistic. And to a certain degree it is, um, because obviously uh, this this is kind of a scale of a, of a habitat that would be for like 99.9% .9 of the zoos in the world not doable in a way um, but I think this 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 0.1% of the zoos in in our world that could do it I wanted to create it as realistic as possible so it is sitting on this island and I pretend that the the apes are not swimming so I know that they they could walk through water our cots could swim but you know we could also put something kind of a natural barrier in the water anyway so like kind of a fence system because the the monkeys are clever enough to not go over it anyway so um, I think it's fair point to have it that way now that's that said, um, I also wanted to make this island as big enough to to give them really a natural environment where they can hide and roam around. Then the one thing I figured is, and it was just me testing, I know that usually all these apes are not going to go together in one habitat. So I was looking back at the movie, and actually I was looking at that one movie um, where most of it, I think it's the second uh, Planet of the Apes of the modern ones, I think it's the second one. Is it Revolution? I guess it's Revolutions. Um, Planet of the Apes, whatever. Uh, anyway, or Dawn of the... What, I, I don't remember which one I even watched, but it was the one that I watched um, which featured uh, the battle of Golden Gate Bridge and where they're living back in their um, little outpost in, in the forests. And the, the cool thing about this is that um, 
they live, the, all the species in there live together. And obviously, yes, they live together because they have been ge uh, gene manipulated or whatever. And they love to live together because, well, they were more intelligent than only the apes. But I figured that in the game, uh, the apes seem to have not a real issue to live together. So I was just testing it and I was deactivating all the sandbox settings. Because as you potentially know, you can deactivate some of the fighting and some of the um, issues you would have from some... Uh, habitats or mixed habitats in the game. Uh, you can't even you can't deactivate killing though. This is something that is uh, still enabled no matter what you do. So it's a bit of a pity. Um, but yeah, so I I figured that this is a good idea to to have it in here um, and to test if they really live together. And it seems they live together. They're pretty happy. And for whatever reason, I also managed um, without actually looking back at the uh, terrain. The animals are as happy that they actually get kids. So. I feel like I made a very decent habitat for the animals without actually looking at it. You can see there was a huge cut right now. Uh, we are already um, doing the detailing on the Golden Gate Bridge, mainly because I, I had a lot of struggle in here doing this. And uh, you can see I actually made this bridge look broken down as if it wasn't after the fight. But this is... Um, not because I thought it would be looking cool. No, I wanted to create, and this is what you see over here, a viewing gallery for the guests where you can really get close to the monkeys without actually getting too close to them. So you can actually walk onto this bridge and use this bridge as the perfect viewing point uh, towards this area. I was trying to build some kind of um, canopy thing over here uh, in terms of if the, the weather is different, but I figured this kind of breaks the immersion too much. So I was just putting some stuff in here and obviously, yes, I was making um, these education boards. And I figured if you, if you have the overlay activated, you basically can't see where the hell the monitor goes. I was like moving the monitor all the time and I couldn't even see where the freaking monitor goes. So, uh, yeah, quite a bit of an issue here. Yeah, put some education in and yeah, obviously also they need to be powered. So I put a transformator uh, down here below that bridge which we are going to hide away later on by some i don't know rocks or whatever so this this will be covered up i i'm pretty sure that this is uh going to be good i have uh, huge hopes in in what i'm doing uh in the next couple of episodes but that said the next episode will focus again on the entrance area um because again this is this is one episode i think which covered a lot of content a lot of animals you will lot of, get a lot of nice uh, and wonderful looking cinematics at the end and I really hope that you enjoy this because I certainly did enjoy building this quite a lot and I was stunned I was actually actually I was I think I was over an hour in the game only recording cinematics not because I wanted to record cinematics because I I just I just was blown away by how nice this looks the only thing I couldn't get to work but it works I just forgot to record because I was so stunned the the monkeys and, and especially the chimpanzees they are climbing up the bridge and this looks absolutely freaking stellar i mean maybe i get to them to do it because at the end i started to put some um uh, enrichment items on top of this one i was deleting all the other ones so they needed to go to these ones um and it took a while but then they did it and maybe i don't know maybe i can get some footage of this included at the end it's it's all pretty tricky and finicky but uh, it I needed to test a lot. Like this habitat, which you can see right now over here, um, is, is what I came up before I then did a lot of off-screen uh, fixing, uh, I have to say. Um, I think there is some fixing left in this episode so I can talk about this. Um, but still, I needed to do a lot of fixes because they kept um, breaking out because I, I put so much to, to climb in and there were so many pieces they used to climb that I couldn't even see where exactly the, um, the issues were. Like the overlays didn't show me exactly where it was, but yeah. You can see also I'm uh, I'm using this backside over here because this is another lovely little view. Um, I created this big viewing gallery where you can look into the little village of the monkeys. And I feel like this is a great contrast. On the one hand, you have this wonderful viewing gallery uh, to the bridge where you can look at the island and you basically can't see um, the bases from over there. You can't see their little fortress. It's, n it's not really that uh, visible. But you can see the whole island and you can see them climbing in the trees and you can see them roaming around and chilling down below by the water, which they do quite a lot. But if you go to the other side of the, the river, you will then be greeted um, by this wonderful viewing area with a um, one-sided glass, actually, uh, which uh, lets you look into their little habitat and their little uh, village. And since I put all the enrichment items and food and stuff into this village, they chill around there quite a bit. And it's actually feeling like this would be uh, a 
um, their fortress where they go back. And it's so cool that just like when um, the uh, zookeeper comes in and puts the, uh, the food in, they're just like all storming back into the fortress, getting some food, and then they go out again. It's absolutely magnificent. I can't, I just, I, yeah, I don't know. It, it is just something that I wanted to do to test the abilities of the game. It was never planned to be in a proper episode because I, maybe it doesn't look nice, maybe it doesn't fit the scene, maybe I do it as a one-off project, but it ended up working so well that I wanted to include this. If you guys say you, you don't like it at all and it doesn't fit the theme and it doesn't fit um, the the Valley Zoo, uh, you know, for what I want it to be, like a realistic zoo, guys, tell me in the comments. There's always the chance to rip it off and put it as a one-off project into another park and offer it to, to download or whatever because the wonderful function now of this game to copy terrain and stuff allows me to do this. So, uh, yeah, if, if you think it would be better, just let me know in the comments down below, but I most certainly love it. Now, yeah, I, I did a little bit of uh, terraforming at the end of this episode, but, um, yeah, that's it already. Now you guys can enjoy the cinematics, and I really do hope you love this episode. Let me know down below in the comments if you like um, if you like the movie, if you like Planet of the Apes, how you like the episode, and uh, definitely, most definitely, what kind of stuff you want to see next in uh, the Yosemite Valley Zoo. Now, I really, really hope that you guys are going to have an awesome day. Hope to see you in the next one. Until then, stay tight and have a great weekend. Bye, guys. Alrighty guys, thank you for watching this video, I really do appreciate that. As always, uh, make sure to check out also my social media channels, you can find me everywhere under at RudyRedCamel. Also, big thanks to the crew, uh, you can see it on the left hand side right now. And as always, if you want to see more, you click that card on the top right. And if you want to stick around because you like the stuff you've just saw, you just saw, whatever, you know what I mean, just uh, click the sub button which is to the bottom right of the screen right now. But everything else I can say is have a great time and see you next time. Bye guys.